Hello everyone, in this video I will be showing you how to use Photoshop as a beginner. The video is mainly for people that are new to Photoshop. Also watch to the ending of this video to fully understand and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by Desi Studio. Now when editing your pictures, the first thing you should know while retouching your picture as a beginner is that anytime you import your picture into Photoshop, you need to duplicate the background layer or any layer below. For example, if you want to import picture into Photoshop, you have to just go to your folder. Once you go to your folder, for example, let me just use this picture here, left click and you drag it into your photoshop so once you drag it into your photoshop you just place it on anywhere or you can just go to the picture and right click once you right click you can open with and select adobe photoshop to open it i'm just going to go back into photoshop now and once you have imported your picture into photoshop then you have to duplicate the background layer just press ctrl j or you click on the image and right click once you right click just select duplicate layer click on ok now you are going to see many tools here as in on your left hand side you are going to see different tools like you will see move tools this move tool is used for moving your image for example let me just show you what you can use this move tool to do once i click on this background layer and i change the color of the background layer let me just use red or pink since the layer is pink just click on the move tool and if i move this image by selecting this background copy up and i can use this move tool to move this image this next tool is the lasso tool this lasso tool it has many use for example let me just select this whole place and show you what you can use this lasso tool to do the lasso tool has many uses once i select this whole place as in once you click on the lasso tool just left click and hold then you draw around this eye brown once i draw around i will just go to this place and select solid color and i can apply any color i like on the places that i have selected so another use of this lasso tool is that you can select and cut out that part of the image for example if i turn off this background layer and i click on this upper background layer and draw around this eyes with the lasso tool once i draw around this eye and i press ctrl x on my keyboard what this ctrl x is going to do is that it's going to cut out this eye of the picture for example if i press ctrl or command x on my keyboard and it's going to cut out this eye so if i go back to this background layer and go to this creating adjustment layer and select solid color and let me choose red now if you notice this solid color layer is below this background layer that means this background layer is front of the color field layer so if i move this color field layer up and this background layer is down the color field red layer is going to make all the picture red that means this picture now this our background layer is back of this our solid color red layer or the red picture so let me just move it back and i'm going to press ctrl z now to undo all what we have done and with time you are going to learn other uses of this lasso tool now for the next two i'm just going to move to this crop tool this is one of the first things that you need to do while editing your picture for some pictures you can just crop out some part of the picture this crop tool has many uses it can help to like give your picture that perfect shape for printing or you can just crop out any part of this picture with the crop tool so i'm just going to click on this crop tool and click on the image and let me just crop out this part and crop out her body and and also this area so i want to give it one kind of box or square shape i can just press enter on my keyboard and it's going to like only show that place that we didn't crop in case you are using the latest version of photoshop or one of the latest version of photoshop for example you are using 2021 or 2022 version or even 2020 but i don't know of 2020 but i'm using 2022 in this my tutorial now just once you just move your mouse to any of these two 
Photoshop is going to show you the use of the tool without you having to stress yourself. For example, if I just move to this lasso tool, you can watch how Photoshop is showing us how you can use this lasso tool. So the next tool I'll be going to now is the spot healing brush tool. Almost every photographer or every retoucher use this tool, this spot healing brush tool. And as you can see in this short tutorial on our screen, you can see the use of the spot healing brush tool is for removing any objects, any blemishes, pimples that you don't like on the picture. For example, if I zoom in this picture now and I select my spot healing brush tool, once I select the spot healing brush tool, I can increase the size and I want to start removing these pimples from the face. So if I double click on my keyboard or left click is going to remove it from the face and you can also left click and hold and drag it if you want to remove too much at once just left click hold and drag it or you can double click some people do use this spot healing brush too and some people you do use this next tool which is the patch tool this patch tool is also like the spot healing brush too but it has different way of removing something from the picture and as you can see in the short tutorial on our screen photoshop is showing you how they use this um, patch tool to draw around this foot and then drag it out to the grass and the foot is going to change to the grass let me do it in one of these parts of this image so i'm just going to select this patch tool and zoom in the image now once i zoom in the image i want to remove this line under our eyes so i'll just use this patch tool to draw around the eyes once i draw around this line of the eyes i'm just going to left click and hold once you left click and hold drag your mouse down to the places that are good once i'm done i'll move to this next part too and remove it once i select it i'll just left click hold and drag down so i'm just going to be careful with this area the next tool i'll be moving to is the brush tool let me just on this background layer and then move to the brush tool once i select the brush tool everybody know the use of brush you can use brush for painting once you increase the size of the brush let me double click on these colors here these two colors once you double click i'm just going to select purple let me just start applying the brush on this picture and as you can see you can use this brush to paint anything you like this brush tool also have many different uses i'm just going to skip to this next tool now which is this history brush tool one good use of this history brush tool but i don't normally use it is that the history brush tool can remove all the brush or uh, all the things that you have used your brush to do for example if i use my brush to paint this eye let me use this brush to paint this eye once i click on the brush i will left click and hold and paint around this eye let me zoom out the picture for you and i click on this history brush tool i can use this history brush tool to just paint around again to remove that things that i did from the eye i don't normally use this gradient tool in my pictures but as you can see in this display tutorial here they say it creates a gradual blend between colors like if you put two colors together it's not going to make the edge of the two colors sharp instead it's going to blend it once you have clicked on this gradient tool make sure the opacity is at 100 or any opacity you like so i'm just going to leave it at 82 and once i click left click on this area and drag it down you are going to see one of the use of this gradient tool and as you can see this upper color which is purple this our upper color here is purple and this lower color looks brown so if we look at these two box here on the left hand of your screen the lower one looks brown so anything you do with these two is going to automatically up apply this two box color on the picture and let me just change this lower background color here let me just change it to red and this foreground color let me change it to green i think green looks good once i select green and i use this our gradient tool again to select this area and drag it down you can see the effects we already like show on the picture and that is one of the use of these two in photoshop so i'm just going to press ctrl z and once i'm done i will have to move to this next tool which is the sharpening tool for example if your picture is too soft as in if you apply frequency separation or you make your pictures too smooth once i select the sharpening tool and i use it to paint around this picture as you can see the picture is becoming sharp it's too sharp so you should also 
make sure that your strength of the sharpen is very low you have to load the strength of the sharpen so just know that this sharpen tool is used to sharpen your image to sharpen the soft part of your image now for this next tool this next tool is type 2 the type 2 is to write anything on your image so let me just press ctrl z now to remove the sharpen tool from our picture click on the image once i just left click you are going to see that your photoshop will give you a sample of any word now all you have to do is to press backspace on your keyboard or you press delete to remove that word now you can type any word for me i'm just going to type dirty studio with capital letter so you can also change the color of the word you type for example you can highlight all the color press ctrl a on your keyboard once you press ctrl a on your keyboard it's going to highlight everything and once you highlight everything you can change the color so i'm just going to come here and change the color to yellow so once you select yellow for the color click on enter and once you click on enter come back to your picture and you are going to see that the dirty studio or the word you type is going to change to the color that you have selected since i'm not using this word again i want to delete it now so just click on the on the typing layer or the dirty studio layer for me the layer is dirty studio so i'm just going to drag it down and go to this recycle bin and move it there this next tool is the direct selection tool i don't normally use this tool in my image and as you can see here they say it's direct selection tool it's used to select and adjust points and segments in a part or a shape you can use it to select points and segments in a part of a shape but i don't normally use it in my picture so i want to move to this next tool which is the zoom tool you already know what the zoom tool is used for to zoom your image once i select the zoom tool and double click it's going to zoom in the image and once you go to this minus here and double click again is going to zoom out the image there's another way to zoom in and out of your image which is a shortcut another good way and very faster way hold control once you hold control hold the space bar and you are going to see that our zoom tool is going to show now the zoom tool is at plus plus me you are zooming in and once you have hold control and space bar on your keyboard and you left click you are going to see that it's going to zoom the picture that means you are zooming it in for example if you want to zoom out your picture you have to just hold alt and space bar once you hold your alt and space bar and double click is going to zoom out of your picture or you hold alt and space bar and left click once you left click and hold it's going to keep zooming out your picture so now i'm just going to hold control and space bar to zoom in the picture one more thing is that below under this tool there are many other tools that i'm supposed to show you but because of time i just have to skip them when you right click below any tool you are going to see other tools below it but sometimes those other tools are not very useful for beginners so that's why i'm just like skipping all those two like you see pencil and brush tool most people use brush tool instead of pencil tool so this next tool is this our rectangular tool what this rectangular tool is used for it has many uses for example i want to select this rectangular shape let me just select this place as a rectangular shape and then i come here uh, on my create new adjustments layer and select solid color once i've selected a solid color and press enter on my keyboard or click ok on the screen you are going to see that the rectangular shape will be filled with that color it has another similar use like this lasso tool there's another tool under this rectangular tool i used to use that's this elliptical marquee tool you can use this tool for another similar thing like that our rectangular tool so before i select the elliptical tool i just want to change the fader to around 100 once i change the fader to 100 i'll press enter on my keyboard and then go to this elliptical tool once i've selected it i'm just going to draw around this face now what i'm going to do is that i want to brighten this face with this tool so the fader that i increase is going to help blend in those brightness as in it's not going to make the brightness very sharp i mean the edges of the brightness and if you don't change the fader before you apply it and you use this brightness it's going to create a like bright cycle that is visible in your picture so now i'm just going to press ctrl m on my keyboard once i press ctrl m i increase the curves of my image you are going to see that only the places that we selected only this cycle 
the part of the face is becoming bright since our next tool that i'm going to be using is the quick selection tool once i have increased the size i'm going to press this plus on this plus not the minus once you select the plus left click and then use the quick selection tool to like select round and let me select this area too also select this place i want to enhance the background color and make sure that this some of this hair here is not visible i'm just going to go to this place here creating adjustment layer select solid color once i've selected solid color you are going to see that it will automatically change so i don't want it to be like that i want it, the color to be the same with our background color so now i'm just going to click on the background layer and move to create new adjustment layer again and select solid color once i've selected solid color this our pencil thing that looks like this is going to appear on the screen so just double click on that place once you double click and now our color picker has already picked the background color just click on ok then you go to this fill color layer here drag it up above the background layer once you drag it up above all layers you are going to see that the edges is now looking sharp and our background has enhanced now some of the parts of the background is no more darker than some and some is no more lighter than some so but i don't want it to look very sharp and to look like this so i'm just going to reduce the opacity i'm just going to merge everything together and move to this next tool which is this our eye dropper too you can just click on this eye dropper too and just move to this part of the hair and left click and as you can see if we look at this box icon again it's going to be the color of the hair so you can quickly use this box icon again let's go to this let me say let's go to this creating adjustments layer and select solid color and, and as you can see the image has already changed to the color of the hair the whole image has changed to the color of the hair so that's one of the use of this our eye dropper tool this healing brush tool is also like the sports healing brush tool this healing brush tool have similar use of sports healing brush tool and it's also similar again to your clone stamp tool which is one of the next tool i'll be showing you for example i want to repair these eyes i want to change the eyes to the skin what i'm going to do is i'm going to increase the size of my healing brush too and then i'm going to hold alt on my keyboard alt once you hold alt i'm going to left click on this lighter part of the face once i've left click on these cheeks i'm just going to go to this eye now and left click again once i left click and hold i'm going to be painting around and as you can see it's healing the eyes that means it's changing the eyes to this part of the face so it's also used for to remove blemishes pimples and the rest this next tool i'm going to be showing you is your content aware tool this tool is very good it's just exactly like the lasso tool let me show you the use of this tool once i select the tool i round it drag it down once i drag it down and i press enter and once i press enter on my keyboard now it's just like the clone stamp tool or the healing brush tool i selected the eyes and i drag it down to the cheeks then the image eyes the former part of the eyes change to the part of the cheek and the cheek change to the part of the eyes this next is our clone stamp tool this clone stamp tool is a very good tool that i always use in my picture for example let me zoom in this picture i'm i'm going to be using this clone stamp tool in this picture now i zoom it i increase the size of the close tab and also reduce the flow and i select this part of the image that is more good just like the spot healing brush tool and i left click and hold and paint around these parts and it's going to fix that darker part of the image by making it the lighter part of the image let me zoom out the image and show you the bigger use of this colon stamp tool once i increase my flow select this nose and left click again paint the eye you see it's cloning that nose and making it to show on this part of the eyes that is one of the good use of this clone stamp tool you can use it to clone any part of the image you like it is also used to correct any mistake you like or to erase any part of the image you like for example i've done some of this retouching on the picture but if i feel like i don't want that retouching to be on the image instead i want to clean it out to make that part of the image look like our old part like the background for example i have edited this layer above but i've not edited this one i will just left click paint around the places that i've edited and as you can see it's going to erase everything that we have done and now the next tool is our blood tool 
I don't use blood tool directly from this part of this tool. Instead, I go to filter and use my blood. This dodge tool, if you right click, you can see dodge, bond and sponge. There's another more professional way to use this dodge and bond tool. Another more way that will make your picture more fine. But since it's a beginner tutorial, I'm just going to be focusing on this dodge and bond in this part of this image. For example, if I select the dodge of this image, and then let me first create another layer ctrl j to create another layer once i select the dodge and i then paint on this lighter part of the image and select the bone and paint on the darker part of the image and as you can see the dodge and bone can also reshape the face of the image Let's look at the before and this is after the dodge and bone tool can be used to dodge the lighter area of your picture which is the brighter area of the picture and burn the darker area of the picture many people do use this pen tool to like crop their image or to change the background you can use the pen tool to change the background but because of time i'm just going to do some kind of quick work here for the background i can use this pen tool to select let me say select this area and select this part of the background let me just use this pen tool to do a very fast work here once i select this whole background with our pen tool and i've selected this area and this area once you have selected it you have to right click once you right click click on make selection once you have clicked on make selection the fader is going to open now you have to change the fader to any one you like uh, you can use two fader one fader but if you are changing background i would advise that your fader should be around one once i'm done i'll press enter on my keyboard i want to change this blue background to be another solid color background and once i've opened the solid color picker you're going to see that let me just pink the places that we selected as in the places that we use our pencil to select has changed the background has changed why this other part did not change is that i did a very quick work because of time i don't want to waste your time that's why this other part did not change now this hand tool this hand tool is one of the good tools in photoshop that you always use for example if you click on any other tool and press space bar on your keyboard it's going to select that hand tool what is hand tool is going to do is going to help you move your pictures from one place to another you can hold space bar and left click and keep dragging your picture anywhere you like or you can just move to this hand tool here once you select the hand tool you don't need to hold space bar just left click and start dragging the picture around anywhere you like and because of time i'm not going to be using this last last tool which is the frame tool because i don't want to start going to my folder to pick another picture to be replacing it so if you watch this my screen here if you are watching it you are going to see this frame tool that photoshop is showing us what it's doing is that it creates placeholder frames for images photoshop like selected the cup then they then use another picture to drag it on that place and as you can see that picture has then shown as in inside the cup so it's one of the good use of this frame tool so i'm now going to move into the next stage of my tutorial which is where I'm, when i'm going to be retouching this image so open your actions you can just head to windows once you head to windows you select actions or you can use the shortcut by pressing alt alt once you press alt you press f9 on your keyboard once you press f9 on your keyboard alt and f9 is going to open the action the first action that i'm going to be using is frequency separation action you can use this frequency separation action to let me say to smooth your pictures so i'm just going to select this frequency separation 8 bits you can purchase my action pack by visiting www.dettystudio.com to purchase actions and other actions you like once i click on this frequency separation for 8 bits and i play this action Actions. once i play the actions you are going to see that after i play the action and i select my brush once i just click on smart filter layer and i select my brush and start using the brush to apply this my frequency separation for 8 bit on my image you are going to see that the result of the picture is going to be changing i'm not supposed to be doing this thing that i'm doing for a beginner tutorial because it's going to confuse you because you'll be asking how can i create this action so i'm not supposed to be doing it but i just want to do it for extra knowledge for people that are seeing you in photoshop and also when applying it you make sure your foreground color is white and your background color is black this two box icon here you make sure the one above is white and the one below is black if for example this box icon is black and the one below is pink or any color just 
go to this smallest default foreground and background color and click on it and as you can see once you have selected that two arrow icon you will see if you leave your mouse on it you will see switch foreground and background color once you click on it it's going to switch now the foreground color is white and the background color is black still select your brush again and continue applying the frequency separation on your picture so i'm just going to be applying it here and so i'm done applying it on my picture and now i'm just going to merge all these layers together once i have made all these layers together i want to go to the next action that i'm going to be using the next action that i'm going to be using is this normal frequency separation action if i use only this second one that i'm about to use on my picture it's going to make the skin of the picture look somehow blur so if i use the first and the second one it's going to make my picture look nice i have to match all this layer for this second one so if you click on it then you hit on the play you just have to be careful while applying it and i'm just going to be applying it on my image so i'm just going to be very careful careful here yeah? but i'm not going to apply it too much so it's not going to make my image very smooth i'm just going to be very careful while applying it and on this part too let me apply it on this area sometimes i don't normally apply it on this part of the image because i want the texture to be showing but i'm just going to keep applying it on this part and i'm done but it doesn't look more professional because i'm very quick while applying it and our picture now look more smooth and more nice you have to press ctrl e to match everything together once you highlight all the layers together you press ctrl e once you press ctrl e it's going to match all the layers together the next thing or the next tool i'll be showing you now is our camera raw filter so now to open your camera raw filter you have to go to filter and select camera raw filter or you press ctrl shift a on your keyboard once you press ctrl shift a on your keyboard and wait and once you wait it's going to open your camera raw filter in this camera raw filter part i'm just going to be showing you how to use the basic tools in camera raw filter so i'm only going to be using this basic for the camera raw filter and i will not be showing you other tools like the color grading part of camera raw filter the effects and the rest so because of time i'll only be showing you how to use this basic now for the temperature you can reduce or increase your temperature for example if your image is very red or very orange or the image looks very warm you can reduce the temperature and change it to more cool temperature and if you look at this image now if i reduce the temperature you are going to see that the temperature is going to make like it's going to change to blue as if the temperature is low or as if the temperature is more cool so if you increase the temperature now if you just leave it to around 21 you can see that as if the the temperature is very high and it's making my picture to look more yellow so in case that your image looks more red as in when you do your photo shoots you can just use this temperature to fix it and adjust the image but for now i'm just going to leave the temperature so if i move my mouse now to this tint the name you will see what photoshop is telling us it determines how green or purple the color appear in your photo move left if the colors are too purple or move right if the colors are too green so what for me i'm just going to leave this tint to be around five and for the next one i will be moving to the exposure now what this exposure does is that the exposure will help you to increase the brightness of your image and as you can see if i select one my image looks very bright so i'm just going to be leaving it to around 0 0.25 0 0.25 is good for my exposure this next one is the contrast the contrast determines the contrast between the light and dark increase this contrast you will see how this image is becoming and if you reduce the contrast you will see how our picture will look like you have to increase the contrast so the image is going to look nice or you can just leave your contrast to plus 14 or any number you like this highlight always controls the brightness for the lighter part of your image for example if your image as in some part of the image is very light like if you look at this our image now some of these highlights some part of the image are like too lighter so those parts are the highlights you can you can use this highlight part to like increase the brightness to make those parts of the image to look more bright or for example this is our background now this area of our background where my mouse is facing looks more brighter and if we increase the highlight you will see that those 
places that are, that are bright will become more brighter so that's the work of this highlight but i'm just going to leave the highlight to be around four now for the shadows what your shadows is going to do is that it's going to add more shadows or reduce the shadows if i increase the shadows you are going to see that like let me increase it more you are going to see that those darker parts of our image is becoming more brighter and it will automatically disappear from our picture but it's very bad depending on the kind of image you are editing and if we reduce the shadows you are going to see that those darker parts of our image will become more darker so that's the use of these shadows you can increase or reduce the shadows i can just remove some of those darker parts of the image so for me i'm just going to leave the shadows to 12 and move to the next part which is the whites you can use this white to increase or reduce the whiter point of your image you can use it to set the whiter point of your image for example some of this part of the image is white this white just have similar characteristics with this highlight this white as in some part of the image looks white or sometimes if you snap a picture you will see that the image is very white you can use this white to adjust it or if you don't like the kind of too much brightness of as in of a white shirt in your picture you can use this white to reduce it the white in our image is reducing when i reduce this white but if i increase it the white in our image will become more white and it will be shining but i'm not going to be touching this white i'm just going to be leaving it to zero for the next one now i'll be going to this black the black is just like opposite of the white it's used for setting the darker points of our image like you can reduce the dark or like you can make the picture more dark just like the shadows and once i reduce the dark the hair will become more black if i reduce the black but if i increase it you will see that the black is like going out of the image just like these shadows that if you increase or reduce the shadows but the difference is that this black is for black while the shadows is shadows so this black i'm not going to be touching anything but i can just reduce the black to around minus eight now for the next one this is one of the most important thing in your picture if you don't know how to use the advanced skin texture process you can just move to this skin texture now if you move to this skin texture you zoom in your image once you zoom in your image you will see that our image looks nice but the texture is not well showing sometimes if you apply some skin smoothing on your image the texture will reduce now you can use the skin texture this texture here to increase the texture of your image you can use it to enhance the appearance of the texture in your photo so now if i increase this skin texture watch the skin of our image you can see that the texture is like reducing and increasing so if i increase it you will see that these little details on the face is going to increase so if i go back to the way the picture was before you will see that those little details has kind of disappeared from the image and now that's the work of this skin texture is very nice for your image if your image lacks texture so for the texture i'm just going to be leaving the texture to be around it is better for the texture this clarity do change the contrast around like the object around the edges of the object in your image for example you can use this clarity to as in to make your picture to look more clear or you can reduce the clarity of your image i'm just going to increase this clarity now so you will see the use if i increase the clarity our image now looks very clear and we don't like it it's making our image look more darker and if you reduce the clarity you are going to see how the image will look soft i won't advise you to reduce the clarity of any of your image so for now i'm just going to be leaving the clarity to be around 10 i think 10 is better for my clarity that's plus 10 once i select plus 10 i'll be moving to the next one so the next tool in this camera of filter i'll be going to is the dehaze this tool has one unique use let's say for example your image you shoot an outdoor image that looks very white and very bright and that brightness that exposure of that image has removed almost all the green grass of your image and the green tree now the green grass some of the green grass has too much brightness that has removed those colors from your image you can use this dehaze feature to bring those colors back and as you can see if i'm increasing it the color is like coming out and if i reduce it you can see the effect in our image but i'm just going to be leaving it i don't use it very much in my picture i'm just going to be leaving it to be around three the next one is the vibrance and saturation most of you already know what vibrance and saturation is these vibrance do increase the saturation 
saturation reduce or increase the saturation without causing as a much problem i normally use this vibrance over the saturation because when you use this vibrance you will notice that even if you increase it to 50 if i increase this vibrance now to 50 you will see that it has increased the saturation of our image in a more pleasant way but if i reduce it now go back to the zero and once i go back to zero and i increase our saturation to 50 you can see that even if i leave it to 46 you can see that our image is too red the color is very too much and it has increased all the saturation equally and make our color very unpleasant for us so i would advise you should use the vibrance over the saturation but sometimes you can use the saturation if you like for example your image is lacking colors or you want to pop out the colors of your image you can use the saturation so for me i will just increase the vibrance let me leave the vibrance to be around 31 and for the saturation what the saturation is used for is to increase the saturation equally in all your image you can and use it to pop out your colors of your image or reduce the colors if we reduce the saturation you can see that our image don't have colors or it has very little colors let me just increase the saturation to be around plus four i think plus four will be very good for the saturation or you can go back to this vibrance and leave the vibrance to be around 20 so our image will not look very red that's all for the camera raw filter this is all for the camera raw filter and now i'm just going to be clicking on this ok now to save your image all you have to do is just go to file you will see different saves you will see save as you will see save you will also see save as copy or save a copy now you will have to choose save a copy now what this save a copy is going to do is that it's going to open another screen for you you can choose any other document you like you can choose png this png is just like a logo document like transparent document you can also choose jpeg you can choose psd now if you save your image as psd this is psd photoshop psd if you if you save your image as psd what it's going to do is that it's going to save it as a photoshop document that if you have not finished your work you can save it as psd so you can play that back that like that document you can double click it and open photoshop again and it's going to continue from where you stop before saving the work but for this image i'm just going to be saving it as jpeg i'm just going to be saving it as jpeg because jpeg is one of the most used style of saving picture you have to upload most picture on the internet with jpeg so once you select jpeg you just click on save and once you click on save you will see options jpeg options the highest option the highest quality for jpeg is 12 in photoshop once you choose choose 12 you will see maximum now it's going to save it in the maximum quality for your jpeg you can also reduce the quality by going to 11 or you go to baseline optimize progressive to reduce the quality if you like if we choose baseline optimize you will see that it will become 4.9 mb if you choose this baseline standard you see 5.5 so this is the highest maximum quality is 12 once we click on ok we go back to our pictures you will see that the image has saved let's open the image and on our computer and let's view the image so you will see that our picture has already saved thank you for watching if this video was very helpful to you subscribe for more videos turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out